Twilight has always been one of the most intriguing and beautiful movies, not speaking of the story details, but the cinematography and portrayal of the film. The intro, I will say, was strange, but because of the adaption from the book before the film's release, we all knew exactly what to expect initially. Scrolling through some random memes one day, I came across one that was kind of making fun of the plot with the picture of the film's poster with the caption, What Plot? Claiming the story was just scattered all over the place. So it made me question if Twilight actually did have a proper plot. Of course we know it is a real story as the story is adapted from the book. Hey guys and welcome to Film Study where we analyze films in various ways to make you see it in a different concept and change a part of a scene and figure out how the rest of the story would play out based on a single change in one scene. And for more videos like this, we'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It would really help out the channel and let us know that we are providing great content for you guys. So the plot to the book reads, Bella Swan is a 17-year-old introverted girl who moved from Arizona to Washington to live with her father. Bella is admitted to Forks High School where she easily settles in with a group of friends. On the first day of her school, Bella sits next to Edward in biology class, but he seems to be utterly repulsed by her, much to her bewilderment. He disappears for a few days, but when he returns, he is unexpectedly friendly to Bella. Their newfound friendship is interrupted after Bella is nearly struck by a van in the school parking lot. Edward saves Bella, narrowly stopping the van with his bare hands. Bella questions Edward about how he saved her, but he refuses to tell her anything. During a campout, Bella meets Jacob Black. She learns from him that Edward and his family are actually vampires who consume only animal blood. Disturbed and riddled by reoccurring nightmares, Bella researches vampires and is saved by Edward once again when she is almost attacked by a group of men. Furious, Edward drives Bella away and takes her to a restaurant for dinner and then back home. On the way, she tells him she knows that he's a vampire. Edward confirms her belief and confesses that Bella's blood is more desirable to him than anyone else's and he wanted to kill her on the first day of school. He tries to stay away from Bella to avoid hurting her, but over time, Edward and Bella fall in love. Their relationship is affected when a nomad vampire coven arrives in Forks. James, a tracker vampire who is intrigued by Colin's relationship with a human, wants to hunt Bella for sport. Bella and Edward are forced to separate as Bella escapes with Alice and Jasper to hide in a hotel. James calls Bella and claims to be holding her mother hostage. Bella sneaks out and hurries to save her mother, but when she arrives, she finds that the hostage claim was a ruse. James attacks her, but before he can kill her, she is rescued by Edward and the other Collins who kill James. After they return to Forks, Edward takes Bella to the school prom, as he did not want her to miss any normal human experience because of him. The film is based on the book written by Stephanie Muir. She described her vampires as very light, sensitive, thoughtful, even beautiful figures rather than blood-guzzling predators. She did a good job at doing this, but when a book becomes a film, some things change. The differences from the book and the film are slight but can have some added effect and meaning to them. For example, in the book, Bella and Charlie don't eat at the diner. Instead, Bella cooks the meal at home. And in the movie, they eat at the diner a lot. Or a moment of Phil saying to Bella, I love you both, but we got a plane to catch. This could be for the purpose of the setting and environment and to give the audience just a smidge more backstory or character within them. Sometimes seeing certain characters in a different spot, there is a difference in perspective of them. Nevertheless, do these tiny differences really matter? Well, yes and no. First, we need to know exactly what makes a plot and the requirements. I personally have been studying film for years when it comes to story, dialogue, and plot structure, so I know firsthand. How I learned is that there must be a beginning, middle, and end. Of course, we all know that, but when do we get to the middle and the end of a story? Well, that's where you really need to understand the fundamentals of storytelling to know. This is what's known as the three-act structure and where the beginning, middle, and end start. The middle doesn't begin until the climax, or an important event happens that changes the normal setting that we are introduced to. There are also questions that need to be answered in order to have a plot, like who is the protagonist, the leading character, what is their goal, and what are their challenges. First rule about having a good plot is everything tying together nicely and unpredictability as you move through the story. So let's go ahead and go through this film to see if the requirements are met. This is a very well-known film, so going over every little detail wouldn't be necessary. And for starters, the film wasn't brand new, so audiences knew what to expect. 
It starts out just like every film should, a normal day until something changes which starts a chain of other events to happen. The scene where Edward and Bella first meet in the classroom, I can understand why it could be a bit laughable as, assuming nobody has read the books before the movie, wouldn't understand the awkwardness between them. Even as the days pass, Bella gets more and more obsessed over a guy that just looked at her once or twice. From what I have learned about storytelling, it is almost all the time at the 30 minute mark that the climax of Act 1 starts. When Bella becomes this suspicious of Edward after saving her, the definition of a climax is the most intense, exciting, or important point of something. The film revolves around Edward and his powers, then to the supernatural world living hidden in the regular crowd. Most films have a conflict or a goal for the protagonist, in this case would be Bella, as the story is written from her point of view. Bella has no real set goal or obstacle. Even the plot to the story didn't have a clear challenge or goal for her to have a real run through, just a chain of events that lead her to figure out what Edward was and join his world. There are numerous occasions where the same thing happens. Bella ends up in a situation where she is vulnerable or in trouble and Edward ends up showing up out of nowhere. Finding out what Edward truly is, isn't a turning point to a story. The evolution is Edward and his kind, there are no revolving issue other than maybe a teen flick. No disrespect to the film, of course, with the success of it from all the books and continuous sequels to the film, but for the point of this video is to determine if the film officially has a laid out plot. In the midway point, the conflict comes when Bella's send is revealed to James. This would actually become the climax of Act 2, as a goal would form to keep Bella safe from him. Of course, the ending is with them dancing happily ever after at prom, and Jessica returning, signaling a sequel to come. There is an antagonist, but it gets resolved immediately with no real challenge to Bella or anyone else for a good period of time throughout the film. It is worth mentioning, however, that the other sequels did more to develop her character like standing up to the Queen in New Moon in order to protect Edward or even developing enough skills and confidence to manipulate him into doing what she wants even when he knows it's a bad idea. I remember when I first started watching the Twilight series and even, even though some scenes seemed like it was very confusing but the story was still intriguing. It can be a risky move to make a story that is different from the rest having an outline structure of proper beginning, middle, and end but that could be the move that separates you from the average. Most films on average will follow a pattern in order to fit in or go by the rules, but not every time do you have to stick to the structure. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below.